In this lecture in Climate and Earth 401, we're going to start the process of using pressure as a vertical coordinate. And what we're going to focus on at this point is the calculation of an analog of pressure gradient using pressure as a vertical coordinate. Remember, in the momentum equation, the pressure gradient is one of the most important forces. However, if we're going to use pressure as an independent variable and as a vertical coordinate, we cannot use the same form of the pressure gradient. So we have to come up with how is pressure represented physically when we're using pressure as a vertical coordinate. In order to do this, we're going to go back to our definition of geopotential. We're going to use the hydrostatic relationship. If you need to familiarize yourself with these concepts, you should look at earlier lectures in the course. We have this relationship that the geopotential, d phi, is equal to minus rt d log p. This is the gas constant for air. This is temperature, and this is the differential of the log of pressure, which is recognizing the exponential nature of pressure decrease with height. We can integrate this equation from one pressure to a second pressure, and we get that the difference, the geopotential difference, Z2 minus Z1, is equal to this integral of T d log P. And from the definition of geopotential, we get thickness and the fact that thickness is proportional to the average temperature between two pressure levels. This will stand at the foundation. This hydrostatic balance in the ideal gas law will be the basis for the relationship between geopotential, the gradient of geopotential, and the pressure, or the, particularly the gradient of pressure. What we want to do is calculate the pressure gradient. First, we're going to look at it physically. And when I look at things physically, I like to draw a picture because I think drawing a picture in concert with mathematical approaches and with verbal and word approaches, if you look at them all together and you can make sense of all of them together, then I think you have a stronger understanding of how to approach a problem. So what is shown in this figure is an x, y plane and altitude. So we can presume that this is our tangential coordinate and this is our local vertical. If we look up the z-axis, we can find a certain pressure, p naught. Just above that would be p naught minus dp, because remember that pressure is decreasing as you go up. And another surface, p naught minus 2 dp. And you can, as you look through x and y, you can conceive that there is at each x and each y, there is this pressure P naught. And hence, you could define a constant pressure surface. That pressure surface would vary with Z. So P naught is at this altitude here. And if we go here, go over, P naught is at a different altitude. Pressure gradient initiates motion. So this is a very important force. It is also a great way to start to analyze motion. And if you see a feature in the atmosphere, or you're trying to understand transport or something dynamical, it's always good to think about the pressure gradient and where the pressure gradient might be acting to cause the motion. This line here would represent the change in pressure on a constant height surface, because this is drawn at a constant z. And you can see that it'll have different pressure here, because here it's p naught minus 2 delta p. And over here, it's going to be p naught minus something bigger, like maybe 3 dp. Then the other alternative is the change in height on a constant pressure surface. So here, We've drawn this line on a constant pressure surface, and you can see that this is at one height, and this end is, a, is at another height. The challenge now is how do we do it in a way that preserves the laws of physics and the conservation of momentum? Again, drawing a picture here, 
going down to just two dimensions of x and z, where we've now drawn lines of constant pressure, p naught and p naught plus delta p. So the first thing that we can do is we can take and look in the delta x direction and look at going from one pressure surface to the other pressure surface. So this is p naught plus dp here minus p naught here over delta x, where we have looked at an estimate of dp dx on a constant z surface. You should recognize this as the very definition of a partial derivative, where we are looking at the variation in one independent variable while holding another independent variable constant. Therefore, when we start to think about doing this on a pressure surface, we're going to be thinking about holding pressure constant and how height will vary on a pressure surface. We can also calculate how the pressure changes on a z surface as we hold x constant. And that's what's represented by this red line. So this would be p naught minus p naught plus delta p down here divided by delta z. Again, this is a partial derivative because we've held x constant and looked at how the pressure changes on a z surface. Now what we need to do is we need to project onto the x direction how much z changes with x on that pressure surface. And this is essentially delta z divided by delta x. Going back to this idea of independent variables and partial derivatives, you can see now that we have moved over to the idea of the pressure surface because now we're saying that z will vary with x. Hence, we're starting to look at the mathematics in the quantitative relationship between these variables in another coordinate system. Staking with this figure, we can say that the change in pressure over the change in x is going to be equal to the negative of the change in pressure over the change in z times the change in z times the change in x. This negative sign is coming from the fact that changes in pressure are going to be of the opposite sign of changes in height. Then using the hydrostatic relationship, we can recognize that this, this change in P over the change in Z is equal to minus rho G. Hence we get the change in P over the change in X is equal to rho G delta Z over delta x. Divide through by the rho, we get the relationship between pressure in x and z in x. Hence, we are making progress on what we need to accomplish to do the coordinate transform. And as we take the limits as delta x, delta z, delta p go to zero in some orderly fashion, we get 1 over rho dp dx equals g dz dx equals d phi dx. Again, here using the definition that d phi is equal to g dz. And it is implicit that this partial of p with x is on a constant z surface and that this partial of phi with x is on a constant p surface. I'm going to say that again in case I said it incorrectly. It is implicit that this partial of P with respect to X is on a constant Z or height surface, and that it is implicit that this change of phi, geopotential with X, is on a constant pressure surface. Hence, the horizontal pressure gradient in the pressure coordinate is the gradient of the geopotential. Horizontal pressure gradient in Height coordinates is 1 over rho dp dx, and in pressure coordinates is d phi dx, d geopotential dx. An analogous equation holds in the j, the y direction, for the pressure gradient in the y direction. And our momentum equation 
in height coordinates looks like this if we assume no viscosity and we just look at the horizontal equations we will have that the acceleration dU dt and dVt is equal to the pressure gradient with the holding z constant so the pressure gradient on constant z surface plus the Coriolis force. We see this explicit representation of rho in the z coordinates and when we go over to the pressure coordinates again assuming no viscosity we get this form of the equation where the acceleration on a constant pressure surface is equal to the geopotential gradient on that pressure surface plus an appropriately defined Coriolis force. Again, an analogous equation in the y direction. We can rewrite this in terms of the vector notation. We can say that the acceleration plus Fk cross u is equal to minus del on a constant pressure surface of the geopotential phi. Doing a comparison of why we went to pressure coordinates, again with horizontal momentum equations with no viscosity, height and z coordinates, pressure p coordinates, the equations look very similar, but density is no longer part of the equation of motion. It is hidden inside of the geopotential. So what you're seeing is you're starting to take some of the relationships that are associated with the ideal gas law and ultimately when you're doing that you're going to be taking into account the thermodynamic relationships between pressure, temperature, and density at some level making them an integral part of, of the equations because that's such a strong relationship and a strong balance. And with that We've finished the first part of pressure's vertical coordinate, and in particular, the calculation of the pressure gradient.